We welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells 2013. You're invited to listen to the next presentation and ask some questions at the end. The next presentation will be here held by Gina and the topic is High Efficiency Electrolyzers. Your presenter will be the Vice President Engineering and Magnifying Timothy Norman. Give him a big hand, please. Thank you, Christian, and thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to invite you after my presentation to, to visit us right over here. It's a short walk in booth uh, D76-3. Um, I thought t today I would talk uh, about some projects we're doing with the Department of Energy, and so I have some cost uh, projections for you when we get to volume production of electrolyzers that I think are um, somewhat futuristic, and I'll explain some of, the, uh, some of the reasoning behind the projections, but also talk to you a little bit about who Gina is, where we have come from. We've been in business 40 years, uh, but we are now uh, selling stacks commercially, and we're looking for our partners to uh, build balance and plant around those stacks, and talk to you uh, about uh, new technology coming through the labs. We've been in business 40 years. We're celebrating 40 years to, uh, this year. Uh, we're based in uh, the USA, in, near Boston, Newton, Massachusetts. And we uh, have strong expertise in electrochemistry, uh, particularly in proton exchange membrane electrochemistry. So uh, obviously we do electrolyzers, but we're also working in uh, sensor technology as well. And we have some products there. We're a growing company and we're a stable company. So we're a good partner for our system uh, OEMs. We've always been profitable and we'll be here for you. So I have some pictures here of different, uh, different stacks and um, electrolyzers in both uh, and fuel cells. Uh, our top, top equipment here is built for the US Navy. And down below is uh, Department of Energy type stacks where we uh, build both high efficiency and uh, we have recently been doing very high pressures up to 370 bar developed within the stack itself. And uh, a few years ago, we also built a very large stack, one square meter, 10 cells. We've worked with uh, our OEMs, people like Treadwell for the US Navy, Parker Hannafin and Peak Scientific, uh, Lockheed Martin in the aerospace area, and uh, we have a development project with Alain Arriva. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that later in the uh, presentation. Well, we have a long history. Our founder was uh, a uh, uh, worked uh, uh, with NASA on the very the very invention of proton exchange membranes. So we have a wide breadth of uh, PAM products for the Navy, Lockheed Martin, NASA, DOE, and as I say, Arava. We're the first to come to market with a high efficiency 47 kilowatt hours per kilo of hydrogen production uh, stack. And it's operating in Corsica. And it's been confirmed by third parties. Our Navy stack is uh, generating eight kilos of uh, oxygen per hour. You can do the conversion back to hydrogen if you like. We make two flavors, one of 36 cells and one of 46. And uh, these, sta these uh, stacks and uh, the systems around them built by Treadwell are replacing the alkaline units on board the, the submarines. And uh, they're about three eighths of the volume. So big, big space savings uh, is important on the submarines. We're also in production on lab hydrogen generators. These are uh, cells that make anywhere from uh, half a liter to two liters per minute. And we're making uh, several thousand of those every year. And we have over 15,000 operating with customers in the world every day. So our DOE project was uh, uh, put together. Uh, it's been running over the last three or four years. Uh, focused on taking our Navy stack, which are quite expensive, quite expensive, and increasing both the uh, efficiency and decreasing the cost of the stack hardware itself. 
So we have gone from almost 60 kilowatt hour per kilo uh, energy costs down to 47. That converted to uh, efficiencies on a high heat value basis that's uh, moving upwards from 67% to 84%. We've done that through higher operating temperatures and lowering catalysts. So our catalyst uh, uh, utilization has gone down by a factor of 10 while improving our efficiencies. So we've reduced costs by 60% doing things like uh, obviously uh, the catalyst reduction but increasing current density to reduce the number of cells needed. Um, and we've reduced the parts count. So back uh, on the Navy cells, we have over 40 parts in every cell. So that's 2,000 parts in a stack. We're now down to seven parts per cell, reducing the labor content of every cell by uh, over 60%. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about where we are commercially. We have a first demonstration in Corsica with Arava Helion. They are testing both a uh, six normal cubic meter per hour and a 12 normal cubic meter per hour stack. Um, we've included all our cost savings I just described with the reduced parts count and the higher efficiencies and the lower, the lower catalyst loadings. And uh, the customer has now operated that for 2000 hours uh, at the 47 kilowatt hours per kilo. Uh, efficiency. Again, the packaging volume is very small, so um, I'm used to inches and feet, uh, so sorry, but it's uh, one foot square by about uh, 15 inches tall. At our uh, NREL test uh, of this uh, stack technology, uh, we included a dimensionally stable membrane, which is a, uh, a membrane that we're developing ourselves in our labs with a uh, integrated uh, polymer support within the membrane material. That allows us to go thinner. So again, we, uh, we've got slightly better efficiency and uh, 46 kilowatt hours per kilo at 1500. And we have all the other cost savings in here and that NREL has confirmed these uh, uh, efficiency numbers. So this graphic shows you where we've been and where we're going. On the left is where we started. We've done a 67% reduction today. And over the next few years, we're going to do another 67%. And the pathway to that is very clear for us. It's just a matter of execution. So how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to increase current density. We're already at 80 degrees C, we're going to go to 95 and we're going to imp implement uh, the three, 3D uh, DSM, Dimensionally Stable Membrane. To, in order to be able to do that, we have to improve our uh, mechanical supports of the membrane and we're going to go to even lower catalyst loadings, maybe not in order of magnitude lower, but uh, that's another 60% uh, savings on catalysts there. We're also reducing parts count. We expect to get to about uh, four parts per cell and uh, that will reduce uh, our, our plating requirements, platinum plating requirements and uh, uh, losses of 30% uh, in scrap materials. And uh, we'll increase um, uh, parts utilization by uh, changing our form factor from circular to, to rectangular. So I'm afraid this is an electrochemistry slide, and not an efficiency slide, so we talk about voltages here. But today we're at 47 kilowatt hours per kilo here. And with the DSM, obviously we could get more efficient. But an alternative, alternative way to look at this uh, slide is to move out to the same efficiency at current densities off the slide here. That would reduce the capital cost of the stack enormously. So what we expect uh, our customers will want to do is operate somewhere in the middle there, take a trade between uh, capital costs and operating costs. But that's kind of the whole game we're, we're hearing uh, in Europe at the moment, is that uh, with the uh, implementation of so much wind and solar energy, the, uh, the, the grid needs to be stabilized, but it's also causing uh, uh, price fluctuations in the, in the uh, real-time cost of electricity. So if the price of, of electricity is high, you'll want to run efficiently. 
if the price of electricity is low, you'll run to run less efficiently, but make more gas, make more hydrogen, yeah? Our stacks are, uh, our PEM stack technology is able to move up and down this curve with ease, very rapidly. Okay, so uh, the DOE requires or asks us to look at uh, a future that's quite a long ways away, making uh, stacks in really high volumes. So, so some of the uh, cost numbers, you're about, uh, price numbers you're about to see are with uh, very high volumes. This is 10,000 stacks produced per year. So obviously we're in this region at the moment, but a future with uh, high penetration of fuel cell vehicles will require lots of electrolyzers. And you can see that the cost uh, obviously comes down with uh, production volumes. And here's where we are today. We're actually somewhere in between. We'll be here at the end of uh, 2013. And we look to uh, 2017 for costs like that. And we look to uh, 2017. So putting that into uh, dollars and cents, and I'm afraid this is uh, US dollars and US pricing, uh, we're looking at uh, 3.9 cents per kilowatt hour electric costs. Uh, we're assuming a 20 year life on the balance of plants, 70 year life on the, on the stack, where we would then rebuild the stacks. And uh, kilograms per day hydrogen station, so 62 and a half kilos per hour. And uh, current, uh, current uh, prices, we would see $3.72 prices and current efficiencies. $3.72 per kilo, which in the US is about equivalent to a gallon of uh, uh, gasoline and petrol. Um, I think you can divide by about, about 3.8, so it's about uh, $1 per, per liter equivalent. Yeah. In the future, we see that being reduced by about uh, 40%. Now, I did a quick model of um, grid power versus uh, uh, and stable uh, hydrogen production out of an electrolyzer or a load following case where the uh, where the uh, electrolyzer makes lots of uh, lots of uh, hydrogen at low cost power and reduces to very low uh, outputs or even zero output at when the cost of power is high And in that case, this wind following case, we get from $2.60 down to $2.20. So another uh, 20, 30% loss uh, reduction in price of hydrogen. And uh, I think that's what's driving the market uh, here uh, very much. And uh, so we're, um, we're going to look at that further. Um, we have started looking in the labs at, at uh, uh, current densities of 10,000 milliamps per square centimeter. We've run a, uh, a small test of 5,000 milliamps per square centimeter for 5,000 hours. We see um, uh, durability uh, of the membrane and the stack in line with those increased production rates. So, so that is to say, at, uh, fu a full load equivalent, our durability is, is the same. So uh, we're very excited about this, uh, this market. So we're going to attack it hard with uh, implementing these stack designs and process improvements in the manufacturing floor that I described. And uh, I, I delineate where the savings are coming from. So there's a design saving of about 40 cents, a uh, new technologies of about 50 cents, and then we can save another 40 cents per kilo on the, uh, on the load following by uh, running under uh, high current density operation. Well, thank you. That was kind of brief, but uh, time for questions. Thanks a lot for this interesting um, presentation. Like you heard, now you are, have the opportunity to ask some questions. Sorry. Uh, my name is Jürgen Mergel, Research Center Jülich, yes, I know. Nice to meet you. Uh, can you say something about the cell voltage, the efficiency at 5,000 uh, milliamps per square centimeter or 10 amps per 
square centimeters. This is a very high current yep. den density. That's and right. I think normally you, you must be low 2.3 volts. Uh, we're running at 5,000 milliamps per square centimeter. We were at uh, two point, less than 2.1 volts. Okay. And uh, 10? And in 10, we were probably about 2.25, 2.3. 2.5? 2.25. So that's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Artur Mofakemi. I am the CTO of Ceramid. Uh -huh. uh, I would like just to know what kind of membrane do you use in your technology? Um, well, we, we use a, uh, a reinforced uh, membrane that we create ourselves. We, ta we take commercial ionomer and then add this reinforcement. And so we build that membrane ourselves. Yes. yes. Hello, my name is Joseph Ott. What about the security? You have the diffusion of hydrogen on the oxygen side, the, and uh, you increase also the uh, hydrogen concentration on the oxygen side. Will it be uh, very um, dangerous or not? Uh, absolutely not. We, we, we are experts at high pressure hydrogen, and um, uh, we, we treat the membrane with, uh, with some chemical additives to reduce the hydrogen and oxygen crossover. So the efficiency, you know, the molecules are still crossing, but they are combined within the membrane. And so we have very low, very low hydrogen and oxygen content. Thank you very much. Uh, did I see any, everybody? Yes, I think so. Okay. So if you have any Thank question you. left here, or do you like to discuss? <gasps> okay. Everything's all right? Yep. Uh, with Mr. Norman, um, this booth is oh, right over there. It's uh, Gina here over there at D76-3. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Please have a seat and um, we will start and continue the next presentation in a few minutes. And the topic from the next presentation is customized SEFC test rings current development status and prospects. Thank you very much.